right, hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM. Joining you from sunny blue sky, San Diego as usual. And today I'm joined by Joe Yazbek, who is in Tampa Bay, Florida. I'm sure equally blue sky, right? Indeed. Oh my goodness. Uh, eat your heart out the rest of the planet. <laughs> yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> And uh, Joe is the founder, president of Prestige Leadership Advisors, and he, you have mentored CEOs and of major corporations, high-ranking military officers, and many others. And you have, you're the author of the best-selling book, No Fear Speaking, High Impact Public Speaking, Secrets to Inspire and Influence Any Audience. And today, what we want to talk about is leadership quality communication. So let's baseline it a bit. So what is leadership quality communications as opposed to just regular quality communication? Well, one must ask the question, how do leaders speak? How should they speak? And, and it's a whole different standard. And when someone walks into a room, our heads turning for the right reasons. Mm -hmm. Do they have that stage presence? Do they have that quality of positive command that they can impact and, and uh, inspire others, motivate them, influence them in a positive way to take action. This is what leaders should be doing. And so if they're not able to speak confidently, how in the world can they effectively lead? Impossible. And so yeah, and our that's company- not, and, that's not something, and that's not something that comes naturally to a lot of people because you can, like people can get into leadership positions, uh, but the actual, you know, the public speaking or the speaking at meetings or the, you know, or virtual meetings now and, and commanding that kind of, of uh, attention and respect, that doesn't come naturally to every leader. No, no, but it can be learned and it is a talent that can be developed. Uh, some people have a kind of an innate sense about themselves. They haven't been too badly burned or introverted in their life growing up. Uh, they haven't learned wrong lessons Mm -hmm. uh, they haven't learned to be too cautious about the world. Uh, you're going to find that uh, innovators and world-class leaders like your, uh, your uh, Stephen Jobs or, or your Elon Musks of the world are, are people that are risk takers and uh, that communicate uh, with the idea of disagreeing with the norm. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, it takes a quality of someone who's extroverted and expressive and naturally uh, built for for creating something new, maybe making something out of nothing yeah. uh, that, that can communicate like a leader. And, and then, able, yeah. And let's face it, sometimes it gets, uh, what gets in the way is maybe baggage from your past or even triggers from who knows, like from school or whatever, where, where maybe you didn't have the best experience and these things tend to haunt people over time. So I guess part of what you have to do is help people eliminate these triggers or the, this baggage that they're carrying? Well, the way that's done in our training center is to not get into cycle babble, but to actually do the skill building exercises that turn it around. It's, it's very much like sports or athletics or even the performing arts. And anyone involved who's listening to this who's been involved in either, they're both entertainment, they're both on a playing field. You have to run the drill and drill it again Drill it again until it's second nature, and nobody's asking you, oh, what happened to you when you were eight? Yeah. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> right? It's, you know, that quickly dissolves because you're learning something new by, by skill building it into existence. So that yeah. is the measure of how you coach someone into becoming uh, more of what they want to be rather than they, what they were. <laughs> And, it, and if you think about it from what you just said there, for it, it's, it's, in essence, it's far simpler to learn a drill, right, and really learn it well, and then just get used to it, then deal with all of that other stuff. So when you maybe step on a stage or when you're going to command a room, it's a lot easier to fall back on the drill and your training now than it is to try and hush all those other things from the past. Yeah, oh, no doubt, because, you know, when you do it right and you're practicing it enough, it becomes second nature. It's natural. It's like you don't have to think about it. It's effortless. It becomes part of your everyday life. You know, like what do you do when someone heckles you in an audience? What do you do when you got a, a, a tough question thrown at you? What do you do when there when there is uh, uh, a, a a person who is who's being rowdy? 
in your audience, uh, or it was the wrong audience that you prepared for. You know? <laughs> You're trained to learn to deal with these things. You know, you know it's something, John, I, and I, I'll, I'll, I'll go off a little bit of a tension, but not so much. You know, they say, well, you know, I'm an introvert. I don't know if I'm really built for this. I said, where did you decide you were an introvert? I mean, people aren't born introverted. Have you ever met an introverted baby? I never have. Mm -mm. No, Never. No, no. Uh -uh, like they're, they're, all, they're almost exclusively to, extrovert. <laughs> <laughs> you have to unlearn what you learned that got you introverted. And that's why I think in, in our training center now, it's online now, of course, but uh, mm -hmm. which is very, very effective. You could train someone and drill what I call, you can't develop a skill without drill. Mm -hmm. No skill, no drill, no skill. And as a matter of fact, we'll add another one on, no thrill, <laughs> okay? Yeah, 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 very I'm good. I'm sounding like I may be in the hip hop, this is ready for a song. <laughs> Freestyling. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Yeah. But it's a, yeah, but that's it is a, it is a really interesting interesting concept of, of that is that it, it by getting really good at something, um, it it has its own it brings its own level of satisfaction. It, it does, and I, I'm a proponent of repetition and practice, and I tell my clients go out and find. Nowadays, it's a little difficult. You're not going to mm -hmm. go find a large group of people hanging out somewhere or anywhere where there is people. And perhaps where they're, you know, go to a beach and just be there looking at people or go to a, you can't go to a theater today right now, hopefully soon, but uh, you go where there's people and go be comfortable, practice being comfortable where there's a lot of people, like going to a place where there are people. And the biggest problem with stage fright or nervousness is they're not willing to have people in front of them and feel comfortable. So continue to be in front of people until you do. Yeah, no, that's a that, that's a great that's a great it's a great and simple piece of advice. You're right. It's like if you don't like being around people, and then you step on a stage or whatever, surrounded by people, it's not going to be the most comfortable experience for you. No, and and right now I'm training clients uh, that that come to us. Uh, I'm training them to how to deliver virtually, just like this. Here we are. We're virtual. Now they're going to have to deliver uh, educational seminars or enlightenment. Yeah on their products and services. They're gonna to need to, to deliver value and they're gonna to have to be able to do this comfortable uh, looking at camera and having, uh, whether it's a Zoom call or whether it's a, 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 a Microsoft team call or go to meeting, whatever it is, they're gonna to have to learn how to be present and how to influence and impact an audience in front of them and get interaction going yeah. also. Just because they're not there physically doesn't mean they're not interacting. Yeah. You know what's amazing about that, Joe? Is, uh, it, it's, fa it's fascinated me because I've, I've been doing this for a long time and done, done um, you know, presentations in front of people on stage and all of that and also done it online. And then there are some people who are fantastic you know, in meetings or on stages. And then it comes to virtual, uh, they think, oh, I'll be fine here too. And then they freeze. They suddenly oh. don't like, they suddenly go, hang on, I a second i can see myself i don't i don't <laughs> like i don't like maybe i'll switch off my cam people start switching off or not putting on their cameras and you're like how can you you can't do it that way you have to just get over it and get out there and and yeah, that's uh, why it takes interact. practice john mm -hmm. john it takes practice and it takes practicing we actually drill this i've got a, an it company right now a very successful it company that is now needing to learn how to deliver uh, on, on virtual conferencing. And now I decided that between their business development director and their, and their chief IT guy, they're going to do a podcast on an interview style so that they're able to engage their audience into an interview question and answer period. And see, that's another thing is you've got to be able to get your audience interactive, get them reaching, you see, because they're, they're sitting there going, I don't want to turn on my mute. I don't, you know, I don't want to unmute. I don't want to turn on video. And I'm encouraging everyone. I hold leadership roundtables every month. And I tell them, be prepared to unmute your video and audio because this is a conversation I'm having with you. You are the key featured speaker for the next hour. Every one of you. Yeah. 
Yeah, and it's great, and it and it it is because you have to put a lot more work into it in some ways, right? Because as you said, I mean, you don't know what the people on the other end are doing, and you have to engage them because if you're not engaging them, chances are there's a few of them who are, you know, putting up ESPN there in the corner or whatever it is they they like. To yeah, and that's the true hallmark of a leader. You know, you talk about leadership quality communications as from the from the beginning of this uh, interview. Uh, if, if, if you speak like a leader, uh, they're going to look up to you literally, uh, you know, and when I say literally, they're looking up to you. Yeah. you know, if you're standing up on a stage nowadays, it ain't going to happen for a while, hopefully soon. But leaders must inspire and motivate their listeners to something greater. And that's the call to action. As you know, there's a call to action to every presentation. What are you calling them to take action to do? Mm -hmm. And it has to be the next gradient acceptable step for them, you see. And if they do that, why well, you got the product of your presentation? It is uh, actually something that tells you whether it was good or not, you see. <laughs> exactly, and that's why I think it's very interesting with the with virtual with the virtual presentations because, as I said, you got to work a little harder sometimes, um, or a little differently, perhaps is, is a better way of putting it. But you have to you have to be prepared to reach out, like virtually reach out and grab that person and say, I'm not going to let you just drift off. Exactly. You're asking very pertinent questions. Some of the questions are rhetorical questions mm -hmm. and rhetorical questions will wake people up and they'll wake them up and incite thought, you know. And a question like, where do you think you would be five years from now if you failed to make a decision that, that your career rested on? If you failed to make it now, where do you think you'd be? I mean, that's uh, that kind of question. And, yeah. and I think that is uh, the key to communications is not over talking, but getting them, getting them to look at something that's hard for them to look at and then ask the question and then give it some time for that question to sink in. <laughs> yeah. And I think you just hit on something there that, that really fascinates me because we, as a culture, we have this hatred of silence, right? We hate silence, especially in interactions or a sales call or presentation or whatever we think, Oh my goodness. But to your point, if you ask a thought provoking question, even a rhetorical question, and then you just race straight on to the next thing you're saying, you're just, you've just removed all the power of it. You have to have that confidence to give people a couple of seconds or whatever to think about it. Excellent point. It's, uh, I've seen this where it's done extremely well and, or not at all. Mm -hmm. And I train this as part of our training in, in making sure that when you have an audience, Give them a chance to look inward, to digest what you're saying, to make it hit home. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, you're cutting the line of communication that they have to their own conscience. <laughs> yeah, yeah <laughs> and like I, like I said, unfortunately, you know, a lot of people, would, they just get so like, oh, there's silence. That's really awkward. Got to fill mm -hmm. the silence. And you break the thought pattern. Yeah, it is. It's actually quite foolish to uh, take it a step further because... Uh, if you're if you're talking too randomly and too with the same cadence and the same rhythm and tempo, you're going to be bored as hell because it's monotonous. Yeah, you have to stop. You know, if I said to you, John, there's one thing that I'm going to tell your audience right now that will help them to double their income next year. Yeah, I'm I'm listening. I'm listening. <laughs> <laughs> I'm all ears. And I'm going to let them reach in. I want them to reach into here. Mm -hmm. You know, that yeah. old commercial with EF Hud, <laughs> when EF Hud speaks, you know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's an interesting, um, so how, so what are some of the interesting dynamics that you've seen since you've been uh, particularly preparing people to communicate in a virtual world? Is there anything that has, that, that really surprises people when they, when they get into it? I think if you, uh, what I have coached them on is, is basically having a conversation. Mm -hmm. And we're having a conversation right now. And people, knowing there's an audience, have a conversation sure. knowing there's an audience, is you're having a conversation and it's, people, are, people are connected to that conversation, much like a singer is connected to the, to the 
the target of the of the message of the lyrics of that song. Mm-hmm. You see, when, when the singer's looking up, the, the, that singer's looking at the person that the lyrics are intended for. And then the entire audience is connected to that line that the singer has to that person as they're looking up. They're never look, singer never looks at the audience while they're singing. You notice that they're looking up. <laughs> it's a connection. Absolutely, yeah. I it's, used to be in the music business and uh, as a performing artist, as a singer, I've done many albums and I've also trained a lot of performing artists to be able to have stage presence. And there's one thing about, about training them to record in an isolation booth of a recording studio, very difficult to, to to unleash or express the real emotions when you've got a microphone in front of you and a hear, earphones in your head and you've got somebody talking to you and lines are going everywhere. And I say, put the person who this song is intended to right on that front door, right there, and sing to that person. And all of a sudden, all this rush of emotion and expressiveness starts coming out, which, is, which gets picked up on the recording. Interesting. No, it's a, that, it's great advice, and I think it's it's wonderful advice, like you just said, because that's what I say to people. People have asked me for advice on, on podcasting a lot because a lot of people are getting into it now, and I said, well, personally, what I do, it's just a conversation between, it's like a conversation between friends who've never met each other before. And yeah. the, audience, the audience gets to eavesdrop. Exactly. There's a chapter in my book, No Fear Speaking, called Authentic Versus Synthetic Speakers. Mm-hmm. And there's, a, there's a, an illustrative chart that tells you the difference between both. It's quite interesting. And people are more apt to listen to an authentic speaker. I mean, you could be, you're going to have somebody who's four foot nine, 300 pounds, Coke bottle thick glasses with a wart on his nose and be as charismatic as anybody else. Yeah, no, ab- absolutely. And I think that's it. And I, and I think you touched on something really good there that we can, we can finish on is that idea of authenticity, because I think we live in a, we live in a, in a highly inauthentic culture right now, a very superficial one and, you know, social media, all of this other stuff going on that I think people crave authenticity. And I think people are getting probably better and better at being able to suss out those who are not authentic. Correct. I agree with you. And I think that is the hallmark of a great speaker. There have been speakers over the centuries that have made their marks and rallied their nations because they were speaking as though they were having a conversation at a fireside chat, much like Roosevelt's fireside chats during the 40s. He was very authentic and they, people felt they were talking to him. Yeah, and I think that's the talking key to, to them. It. Yeah, and I think that's the key to it. Well, listen, uh, Joe, this has been fantastic. All of Joe's information will be in his contributor bio below this uh, video. But before we go, please do tell people a little bit more about you and your company. Well, Prestige Leadership Advisors, we basically exist to train business leaders or leaders of organizations and executives in the art and science, I should say, the artful science of presentation and public speaking so you can become a more competent speaker to get your messages and your vision communicated to any audience to help you become a more effective leader by becoming a more confident communicator. That's what we do. The book No Fear Speaking is a best-selling book. It's now published in eight languages. Pick your language and go read it. It's worth it. And uh, (laughs) you can find it, the audio book or the print book on Amazon, iTunes, or go to nofearspeaking.com and download your copy right there. Yeah, and, and I would really uh, encourage people to to check it out and to check out Joe's work because, as I said there a moment ago, I think the world is craving authentic communication. So you can give yourself a great competitive, competitive advantage here if you really learn how to deliver messages in, in a very authentic and powerful and, and enticing way. I, I think people crave it. If they go to prestigeleader.com, John, they can take a free test and they can rate the presentation skill. And uh, they'll get a confidential, free confidential uh, interview to go over the results. And it's quite revealing. Excellent. Well, I would encourage people to do that uh, as well. I mean, you've got the time. Invest in yourself, for goodness sake. You know, instead of complaining about being locked in your houses, in, you, you know, hopefully we'll all get out and hopefully all this will be over soon. But in the meantime invest the time wisely well done well said i enjoyed it 
Yeah, great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline or CRM. See you all for another expert interview really soon. Thank you.